sort of events. Yeah, everybody can see this. Yeah. yeah, we can already see. Perfect. Yeah, so my journey started literally. I mean, actually, I've joined the class the day uh, my husband came home from the hospital. So it was, I'll, I'm always going to remember when I did the course. So we were all about the shape family was all about redefining our health. And my first slides, I'm just going to browse through uh, what we've done because Sir said, let's not repeat this, but I've made it nevertheless because I'm going to share this with my, some close friends and family. So we've learned about the Ashtang Yoga and the limbs of yoga. We've learned about the Yam and Niyam, uh, what they mean. Uh, why they are all interconnected and how they are all interconnected. Um, and yoga talks about four streams of yoga, how we can bring it all together. Yoga also talks about the five subtle bodies besides what we all know as our biological body. Uh, understanding of this helps to go a little deeper. Uh, we are also made aware of the five pranas in our classes and the chakras. It's interesting to note here, I'll come back to the point why I've included chakras over here and how they help you. So yoga, we all can conclude and concur that it has a lot of, it connects all this, our physical, mental, emotional, along with our breathing, muscular, all those activities. But my point, my topic of interest was yoga and immunity. So with the current pandemic coming out, everybody is all about immunity, immunity, immunity. And we're wondering what is immunity? And somehow everybody says yoga is best for immunity. So what is this immunity that we are talking about? First, we need to understand immunity itself. So what is immunity? An immune system is a complex network of cells and proteins that defend the body against infection. This is a common thing that we all know. And when only when your system is working properly, you realize, you don't realize you have strong or poor immunity, but only when it falls sick, you realize the importance of immunity. So it's very interesting to figure out what it is. So in local language, we know it's a combination of all these, um, uh, the things that we keep hearing that it's white blood cells, it's WBCs and complex proteins, tissues. And we hear things about, it involves the lymph system, the thalamus, spleen, and all these other organs. This is a little biological, but we all are aware of these words. So what does it do? So it provides, why is it so important? That it provides us defense against the pathogens. It removes the blood, dead blood cells from our body. It identifies and destroys abnormal cells. For example, like in cancer, you need an immunity system that is able to remove the bad cells from the body. And it protects the autoimmune diseases. And it rejects the tissues of cell of foreign antigens. So this is why we need our immunity to be strong. The immunity system keeps a record every time a microbe has ever defeated any external infection. We have a system of remembering that. So next time when it attacks, it can go back to doing, attacking it again. So what are the indicators? of an immune system. If you have a weak immune system, these are the kind of things that you know, you get a cold, um, uh, uh, often you get cough and cold, there are stomach disorders, the wounds take longer to heal, and there are fre frequent infections. But an overactive one, you see things like asthma, eczema, food allergies, and things like that. So without a hel healthy immune system, you can pick up infectious diseases more easily right and there and there, these are the autoimmune diseases that the body generally contra contracts so the immune system is of two types there is innate and there's adaptive so innate is the kind that you are born with and adaptive is what you develop it's acquired they, how do we know this 
the science has discovered the different kind of cells which can identify whether it's acquired or it's developed. But now comes a complex part, which I was actually hoping that we do this after Sir explains us the endocrine system. So we have to understand that in order for the immune system to work, just like Amar Akbar Anthony, we need these three systems in place. It's a complex network of these three systems, your endocrine system, your lymphatic system, and your nervous system. The endocrine system is a network of glands in your body. Hopefully now Sir will take it up at the end of the class. Uh, where the cells talk to each other uh, and they recognize that they're, they're responsible for every cell organ uh, of every cells that communicate with each other. Then there is a lymphatic system. What is a lymphatic system? We did last time. It's a network of nodes and knots that connect the various blood vessels in our uh, body. And there is a nervous system, which again we did last time, which kind of carries the messages throughout. So now what is interesting is to understand that the lymphatic circulation is not like the blood circulation because the blood circulation, the heart pumps and the blood goes up and down on its own. Whereas the lymphatic system does not work, does not circulate on its own. It circulates with the movement. It's very important to understand this part of the lymphatic system. It is it is, uh, it also, a lot of times it's considered as a part of the circulatory system because it overlaps along with the circulatory system, but a lymphatic system is a parallel system that works along. But the lymphatic fluid is not pumped up and down like the way the blood is pumped up and down by the heart. Now what happens is whenever we have stress, it affects all these three systems. It starts off, it all starts from there. So the, when, when there is a garbar in any one of these three is when the disease becomes stronger and starts manifesting. Now cut to endocrine system. Let's understand this, that it has glands. It's, it has a lot of important functions in our body. It sends signals. And when glands do not produce the right amount of hormones, diseases develop and can affect many aspects of our life, which we all concur that it actually starts from there. So here we have to identify the organs of the endocrine system. And again, I would like to bring to your notice how we noticed the seven chakras that were placed. So most of these organs are in alignment with that. If we see through the central axis of our body. Now the lymphatic system, they are, again, like I explained earlier, they are a network. The, uh, the, our lymphatic system moves in vessels, unlike veins and arteries. It's important to keep this in mind as a yoga instructor. And uh, like I told you, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't flow on, it, it can be mobilized with movement and breath. So it requires an external force for it to circulate well. And this is where the yogic intervention can be very effective because the contractions, expansions, twisting, turning, bending, it all stimulates our lymph system. Again, I would like to bring our attention to the fact that how these are placed and how the yogic science identifies these crucial points and how they can help you. So again, coming back to that thing that how the whole thing is connected, that the immune systems take care of all these things, which are our soldiers for taking care of or fighting against any disease. And therefore the immunity, what we all keep talking about. And we have studied earlier that how our mind and body are interconnected. This is not just a theory, but it's also physiologically proven that how these things are all interrelated. Again, coming back to the Ashtanga Yoga, that working with the eight principles of yoga play a very big role in aligning ourselves and keeping ourselves healthy, not just at the physical level, but also at the mental level and therefore the emotional output. I wanted to, sir, I wanted to add about the mudras and the food, but because I myself didn't have enough knowledge, I've not put it here without 
understanding in depth because these topics were dealt recently. But just to bring to your notice that if you now notice where our lymphatic system, if you want it to go up and down, this is why the inverted poses play such an important role. How pressing at certain points and how we are mobilizing those things and our, we are, uh, of course, the power of breath during these things and applying the bandhas and all. Bandhas are kind of an accelerator in a car. You know, they kind of accelerate the good impact that we can have within the asana. I'm still more at a physical level. But if you notice, and if you keep a mental image of where those important junctions that control our immunity are in place, and these asanas all of a sudden have a completely different meaning, and we realize that every time we are doing something, we are activating that system so strongly in our body. And the power of breath is absolutely acceptable by all of us, that it is very, very powerful. I've added, the, of course, the yogic diet and how we should keep a balance in our food and understand what works best for our body type. Yoga exists in the world because everything is linked. This is one thing that I have learned by understanding the immunity system. I have learned another thing that we should keep our mind, body, balance, a healthy lifestyle, consistency, Balanced diet, rest and sleep, positive thoughts and right attitude can help us have a disease-free life. Thank you. Wonderful. So I would say, first of all, it was a very, very nice uh, journey. I cannot. Be loud, sir. Yeah. Hello, am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so first of all, I would say it was a very nice, uh, it was a nice presentation. Uh, very nicely presented, of course. Um, uninterrupted and it was uh, very clear. You know, almost everything whatever you wanted to cover uh, was covered nicely and that too in time.